hello, my most amazing artists. Today we're going to continue with our math and science theme. We already talked about geometric shapes and values when we made our robots. And now we're going to talk about how we can take a flat geometric shape that's two dimensional and turn it into a three dimensional form. We are going to be, pretend to be scientists today and to draw forms to look like science beakers using shapes, lines, and value. We'll even be doing a little bit of a chemical reaction color mixing experiment. For this project today, you're going to need paper, a pencil, and something to color with. If you want to participate in the color mixing portion of this, you're going to want to have washable markers. And if you want to take it a step further and cut your beakers out to make freestanding form sculptures, you will need scissors, tape, and a paper towel tube. So gather up your supplies and let's talk about how we can create forms. Today we're going to take our knowledge of geometric shapes and use that to learn how to draw forms. Now a form is another one of our elements of art. A form is a three-dimensional object which means that we can see it from all sides. Top, bottom, left, right. It's kind of like a sculpture. Shapes, however, are 2D. They are flat and can only be measured two ways, and that's from measuring the width and the length of the shape. What makes a form different is that they also are measured with length and width, but they have an additional measurement called depth. So they have three different measurements, length, width, and depth. And that's what makes them a three-dimensional form. So let's talk about drawing a form. I want to stick with that science theme from the robots and I want to draw some scientist beakers. But I have a problem. My paper is two-dimensional. It is flat. How will I make my beakers look like they're three-dimensional and popping out on a two-dimensional surface like paper? We are going to make something called an optical illusion. Optical meaning eye and illusion meaning magic or trick. And so this, we are going to learn how to draw a form so it is an optical illusion, which means that it's going to be looking like my beakers are popping off of my page even though my page is a flat surface. Okay, so I'm going to start by drawing my beakers using a geometric shape, the oval. The oval is going to be the opening of my vessel where all the liquids are put into. So I'm not drawing an oval that's going vertically up and down. It's going to be going horizontal and it's going to be really skinny. So up towards the top of my paper, I'm going to start by drawing some skinny ovals for the openings. Now I'm trying to fit three different beakers on one piece of paper. So I have to make sure I'm going to have room for one, two, three. Now you could do one big beaker on a page, you could do two on a page and do one on a third, it's up to you. But I'm going to draw my three sideways ovals for my beaker openings. Look at how skinny they are, they are not very wide, they are not very fat. And I'm keeping them kind of spread out because I have to account that I'm going to fit my body in here. Around those ovals, I'm going to draw a line following the curves, pretty close to the shape. It looks like a big skinny rubber band. This is going to be the lip of my beaker. There we go. Now, beakers have a very specific shape. Some of them are cylinders, some of them have rounded bottoms. They all are kind of different. So I'm going to start with this middle one just because I want to make sure I have room for the other two on the edges. All of my necks are going to have like a rectangular shape, another geometric shape. So coming from the edge of my inner oval, I'm jumping over here, I'm going to draw two vertical straight lines that are about the same length. That's pretty good. Now I have to decide what the bottom of my beaker is going to be. Is it going to be rounded? Is it going to be triangular? Is it going to be circular? It's up to you. 
I'm going to do this type of shape for the first one. It's going to kind of have a curved edge that comes down, almost like a message in the bottle. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to try to keep it symmetrical. I want it to be as close to the same as possible. Like that. And then you can do a flat edge or I'm going to do like just a little bit of a curve on there. Okay. Now, I'm going to give this beaker just a little bit of a three-dimensional form by doing a curved line that's going to go from the corner to corner and it's going to stay kind of skinny. It's not going to be very wide. And of course, beakers hold liquid. So we have to make the illusion that there is liquid being held in this beaker. So towards the top of the body of my beaker, not in the neck, I am going to draw another sideways oval that's skinny just like my top ovals that goes from one edge of my beaker to the other edge and back. Not bad. Now we know beakers have lines on them so you can tell how much liquid you are putting in. It's like a measurement. If you ever cook or bake at home and you use a measuring cup, you would see these types of lines that have numbers next to it. I'm going to do my next one now. I'm going to move over. I'm going to start with my, my inner most oval. I kind of want to make lines coming from that spot to vertical lines. Your neck could be a little skinnier if you want it to be. But they should be around the same length. Now I'm going to change up the shape of the bottom. I'm going to give it more of a triangular bottom. So if you want to break this down into geometric shapes right here, I've got an oval. This is more of a rectangle shape. And now I'm going to create a triangle shape for the bottom. So I'm going to do two diagonal lines that come down. And I'm going to close the shape. Now I still want to make it look a little bit more like a form. So I'm going to add a curved line that's close to the bottom. From one corner to the other corner. And again, I have to put the liquid on the inside. So just like in this one, I need to make an oval that is stretching from one side of my beaker to the other side. And it has to be skinny. And then we can add our measurement lines. I'm going to do my last one here. This time I think instead of having a triangular edge, I'm going to have a very circular edge. So again, we're starting with our two vertical lines. Coming down, about the same size, and now, actually I'm going to give this one a really long neck and we'll see how this goes. I want it to have like a circular bottom. And if you have a circle template or some kind of lid to trace, that makes it a lot easier. Now drawing these forms can be kind of challenging. So if you try to break it down into the geometric shapes and pay attention to those skinny ovals, it gets a little bit easier with practice. But you might want to, before you begin doing your final beakers, take a piece of scrap paper and practice making some shapes a few times. It never hurts to practice. I actually did a practice right before this because I wasn't sure how I wanted to do it. Now this beaker also needs to be holding in some liquid, so we can just have a small amount of liquid at the bottom, or maybe they filled it up into the neck this time. So I'm going to draw a little skinny rectangle in the neck of my bottle. Okay, the next step is I am going to be outlining this with a Sharpie. If you do not have a Sharpie at home, don't outline yet. You can wait until the end, because otherwise if you use just a regular black marker, you might have a problem later. So. If you don't have a Sharpie, I would wait, but I'm going to quickly outline mine. Alright, the next step to our project is adding color. Now you can use whatever colors you have available to you to use for your project. I want to think like a scientist, so I want us to do a little bit of a chemical reaction color mixing activity while working on our beakers because when scientists use beakers, they're usually doing some kind of experiment. Maybe they are mixing chemicals together to see how they will react. So I want to try something similar. But again, use whatever colors you have available. I'm going to be using just regular 
water-based Crayola markers, washable markers, and I'm going to use the three primary colors, blue, red, and yellow. And as you know, when you mix two primary colors together, they create a new color called a secondary color. So you can get every color in the rainbow by using two of these three colors together. So I'm going to be doing that experiment in each one of my beakers. So I'm going to start by selecting two of my primary colors. I think I'll start with yellow and red. And now I'm going to be adding that color into the liquid area of my beaker. So wherever my little oval on the inside of the beaker is, I'll be filling that with the colors. So I'm just going to be using the broad edge of my marker and making a bunch of lines, or you could do dots if you want to, but I'm just going to fill up the liquid area and I'm not coloring it in. I'm leaving some white spots here because I need to leave room for my red to go. Now I'm going to add in my red. So think in your head, do you know what secondary color you're going to get when you mix red and yellow together? We are going to find out in a few minutes. So I'm just kind of filling in the rest of that white area. There's still some white spots showing, but I'm trying to evenly have the same amount of like red and yellow in there. Let's move to the middle beaker. I think I'm going to experiment with using the primary colors blue and yellow for this one. Doing the same thing. On my last one, I only have one primary color combination left, that's blue and red. Now, before we can do this chemical reaction, we are going to be taking another element of art that we used on our robots to give this form even more of an optical illusion, and that is value. Now remember, value is the lightness or the darkness of a color, and when we add value to these beakers, it's going to take them from being flat to looking fat or 3D. It's going to be part of an optical illusion. So to add value on mine, I'm using a black crayon. Now you can use a pencil if you have one on hand. That would work just as well. So I'm going to start by going on the edges of my forms or my beakers and I'm going with a dark value. So I'm pressing kind of hard. So I'm going with a dark value around the edge. And then I want to lighten up the value. So I'm going to go really lightly, like I'm tickling the paper. Oh, that tickles towards the inside. And I might not even have them touch. I'm leaving a little bit of white there. I'm going to do a little dark under the lip there to make it look like it's popping out. Now I'm going to do the bottom of my beaker and I'm going to go, my whole hand is going to move to follow that curve and I'm pressing super lightly darker at the edge but really lightly as I move into my form, taking it from flat to fat. So lightly is when I get to almost the middle, it's just like I'm barely touching the paper, I'm tickling it. I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Once you're done adding your value to your beakers, we are going to do our chemical reaction experiment. So what you're going to need is a cup of water and a paintbrush. Mm -hmm. 